Hello world, Patricia O'Connor and one Freda Riva Darcy here. We have our coffee. We have our little copyright uh, free tune, cued and ready to go. And um, it is a really lovely day in Alameda, California. And this is a little quick look at the balcony and our trees and how they're looking. Everybody seems to be doing pretty nice right now. It's our Tuesday drop. And what I have today is a little talk about some of my favorite trees. Um, the bald cypress. And it's very, very close cousin to Dawn Redwood. These trees do sometimes get confused for one another. Uh, the differences in them are kind of subtle, but there are some definite differences in them, and they are distinctly different trees. Um, if you like cypress trees, if you like fall cypress trees, it stands to reason that you would also probably like Dawn Redwood. Or if you've come to know a Dawn Redwood, it might be that there's a whole new avenue for you to explore in its close cousin, the bald cypress. Uh, this grouping of three, plus my little, my little Etsy bald cypress, uh, makes four of those versus my very first bonsai tree purchase. This is a Dawn Redwood. It came from Brussels uh, Bonsai Nursery a couple of years ago, around January or February. I believe it was some of their leftover Christmas present kind of stock. You know, the trees you knock out to sell during the holidays. And um, when I bought this tree, I went, it's probably not gonna look as cool as it looks in the picture, but we'll find out how, how all that actually plays out when we get it, we'll see what's up. And um, also we'll get some bonsai tools. This will be the thing for which I, and I did, I bought some pliers, I bought some printers, uh, I brought some uh, uh, hybrid cutters and um, uh, a few other little odds and ends to get started and uh, roped at a bonsai table. So I bought some tools so I could go all Paul Bunyan on this guy while at the same time um, I uh, would be able to say that I had purchased a, uh, a bonsai tree. Having just started a couple of wisterias and realizing that they were going to be pre-bonsai for a couple of years, I thought, well, I'll go to a page that says these are bonsai trees and buy something that says this is a bonsai tree and then I'll be able to say I have one kind of that idea um in in truth my wisterias were probably farther along but here's why this has always been a really really uh good tree for me to start with last year i saw that i wanted to uh do a styling change what you see right now is uh, one of the lessons i learned uh, i would constantly uh, cut and nip and uh, prune back this tree thinking that um, it just had endless amounts of energy and uh, if another tree didn't look like it was getting enough light I might move this tree into out of the spot and, and allow it to you know so it's kind of moving it around a lot uh, that's one mistake I made another mistake I made is I saw where I had a root that was absolutely coiled around here and I cut it and I had been warned that um, Dawn Redwoods do not necessarily like having have you know you don't necessarily go in there and just chop off those cross roots uh, the way you would on some other trees that might actually lead to dieback so about the time that I started really thinking that I loved the shape of the um, of this tree if left alone instead of what I was doing which was kind of like a heavy carve and then allow this branch to grow extra thick and produce a shoot that would produce a cathedral style second top 
And looking at it last year, I was seeing where this was still where the, this was still to me the money shot. That was coming along a lot quicker, a lot nicer than I had thought that it would. And so I was kind of starting to rethink that cathedral thing. And it was about that time, and it was sitting right here at the time, that uh, we got powdery mildew on a couple of trees. I think a couple of my oaks. And I started treating them for PM, and uh, that went fine. Uh, a, a little bit of neem, and the PM went away. I didn't notice that this guy, it didn't change its color when it got powdery mildew. Powdery mildew affected the bottoms of uh, the little petals, and they stayed their original color, but dried out from the inside. And uh, so that, in effect, was uh, a complete defoliation after I had already just kind of done a little bit of uh, a pretty heavy prune on the tree. And uh, with that, it said, enough and uh, took the, uh, it didn't produce hardly anything to sustain itself. All last, uh, the end of the summer, nothing came back on it. Going into fall when the when the cypress trees were still, still flushing out stuff because it hadn't gotten cold enough for them to go winter yet. Uh, they, they never stopped, but the Dawn Redwood did. And it hadn't put out anything until this spring. So right now, uh, with that still idea that I had in mind last year that I would like to um, allow the tree to make new choices and that we're going to do it in a more, um, I'm going to build the tree I see in front of me. Probably none of the branches that are sprouting out now will be keepers, but what this will do is it'll get the ball rolling and get the energy rolling. And then we'll just, but we're going to let it do all of this that it wants to for a minute because we've got to, um, we have to recover from a lot of lost energy. So that's the kind of the backstory on that Dawn Redwood. And what I learned about um, treating trees that seem to uh, present you with a lot of energy and being reckless about that may have saved me some trouble on my uh, bald cypress uh, grouping. I definitely am more careful with this grouping than I am or than I had been with this guy. And this guy kind of taught me what not to do. Um, yeah, when a tree has a lot of energy, just be happy that it has a lot of energy and don't go trying to tax that stuff. So we've done whole videos about, I've done a whole video about the problems of that before, uh, but that's just kind of a quick rundown of how I feel about that. When I got these, when I got the bonsai, when I got the, the bald cypress bug, uh, I went to YouTube. This guy's going straight down. I'm going to get it right quick. I went to YouTube and I saw several, several people who were doing a really, really good job of, uh, of growing cypress trees. And a couple of them and a couple of guys who were who were a little less than that, uh, which is to say that some people live close to where they are and have an endless supply of things, but you don't tend to see uh, the same trees for very long. It's kind of like their learning curve comes at the expense of chewing up a lot of stuff. Um, okay, I get it. Not everybody's an expert on day one. I certainly am not. But uh, there was also some people who seemed to really do it right. And um, um, I'll probably make a link for a few of the guys that I think that if you ever watch their videos on bonsai trees and on uh, bald cypress trees, that uh, the information that you're getting will be, will be, you know, good information. And some people... Uh, Kind of, kind of go with the idea, like like what I was talking about earlier, that I was also a victim of. You just look at these guys and go, "Wow, these guys just have energy for days." If I want to chop this or chop that, uh, it, it's just going to come out with more. Yeah, until it, until it's had enough, or until you've used all the energy, and uh, then you can really make a mess. So, 
The reason I'm trimming this little piece here while I'm talking to y'all is there were two shoots coming straight out of the bottom, two shoots coming straight out of the top, and then the two here on the side that we could actually go with. So it was just a really good time to clean that up before that made some huge knot there. So uh, about the trees and how they are quite often mistaken for one another, cypress trees, the bald cypress trees, the fronds on them are a little light and lacy looking. Given the same size branch, a dawn redwood, the individual petals tend to be a tiny bit thicker and wider. Also, they are uh, like closer to asymmetrically apart from one another, across from one another. I've heard people describe the um, cypress fronds as being every other one opposed kind of a thing. Like maybe, like kind of like that except what I normally see is stuff like, more like this on most of the tree. And I wouldn't say those are, or there's no pattern there that I see. It just crams as many little petals on one side as it can, and then crams as many petals on the other sides as it can. And it looks a little symmetrical, except for the couple of uh, vacant spots, but that's, you know, it's not so much that it's being symmetrical as much as it's just trying to put out a lot of little petals so uh, they do sort of make a pattern. It's a little harder to detect in the early going, but they do come closer to making a pattern on the Dawn Redwood. And they look a little more, uh, they look a little bit more chaotic, but I don't think chaotic is the right, right word necessarily. There's not, I wouldn't say there's a pattern to that, but it doesn't look necessarily disorderly or anything. Um, it, it kind of looks uniform, I guess, but there's not really a pattern in that. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's one thing. That's one difference. The other difference is, to my knowledge, I've never seen a John Redwood with buttresses like that. Now, you will see these rolls around, around the base of the tree. That's not that's uncommon, I don't think, but I don't necessarily see them buttress like this so that's one little difference also both of these trees are ancient and by ancient i mean they find fossils of these limbs and leaf patterns going back to you know before there were insects before there were reptiles before there was anything before there were pines before there were oaks before there were maples there were um Sequoias, giant sequoias. There were uh, coastal redwoods. There were dawn redwoods. And there were uh, cypress. And there are several species of cypress. There's something that growing up in uh, southeast Texas in the bayous and lowlands, we also called it a pygmy cypress, which uh, was a smaller cypress tree, would have a similar shape and bark and uh, tended to grow like, you know, like maybe in the shadow of the other trees because you didn't tend to see them get as big. And the foliage on that looked a little bit more um, Monterey cypress or juniper looking to me than, than uh, these little leaf-like fronds. So uh, then there's another species uh, around Texas and Mexico. I can't remember the name of that off the top of my head, but uh, it is uh, a species that is indigenous to that area and might be endangered, but uh, think along natural waterways around the desert, like uh, like the Rio Grande area and all of that, or uh, some of the rivers and, and tributaries in um, in the hotter regions of Texas or in, or in Mexico that still have uh, access to you know banks of fresh water and stuff it's kind of like if you think of a place where desert meets desert meets river there is a variety of uh cypress tree there that grows it pretty much just in that region uh but the rest of these guys they have found their fossils all over the planet dating going all the way back all the way back and for years and years 
they thought that the Dawn Redwood was an extinct tree. Uh, they didn't know that they existed anymore until about 19, I think it was 1942, 1945, somewhere, somewhere in there. Uh, somebody discovered, or somebody who was local in China wrote that they were looking at some redwood trees uh, that shed their, that shed their uh, foliage every year. So finally, somebody went out to check and look and see what they were talking about, and um, and it was discovered that they had they had what was thought to be an extinct species of of uh, redwood. So it was after that that uh, I think part of the story goes that they also discovered that some monks in the region had been making uh, bonsai trees from those redwoods. Uh, from the Dawn Redwood for years. So um, had anyone wanted to look at what they were doing, they would have seen where these guys were maintaining these trees on a daily basis and had for quite some time. So, and it is because of uh, the discovery of those trees in that region and uh, that we have uh, Dawn Redwoods today. And you can literally at spring probably go to almost you know, any nursery and at least order one, if not see them. So they are worldwide again, uh, from that one, from that one sighting, uh, in China back, uh, those few decades ago. So that's kind of a, a little interesting take on that. Uh, these trees are very, very hardy and they are not hard to grow. You can mess with them. That's kind of that's kind of why I'm focusing on that. You can mess with them to a point to where they will act as though that they're in a, a pestilent situation, like too many fires, too many cattle, too many something, and it'll just it'll just pull up its it'll just pull up its toys and go home. And it doesn't necessarily mean they die. It means it'll go dormant on you because it's tired of being messed with. And uh, sometimes they have die back when they do that and sometimes they don't. So it's kind of a, uh, it is a mixed blessing. These guys will show you a lot of energy. They will show you a lot of love. They will give you an opportunity to pinch off a few things that are in the wrong places, but you should probably allow it to uh, have its way for the most part and then deal with little situations here and there as they arrive. Not saying don't do your own styling, definitely. But um, that thing where um, you pinch off everything that comes out just as soon as it comes out and keeps it down to a couple of small limbs that you think are beautiful, that can exhaust your tree over time. And uh, that's why I'm letting these guys go because of what I learned uh, messing a little bit too much with my Dawn Redwood. So, uh, be mindful of that. Right now, it's getting fed, it's getting watered, and it's just busting out with everything that it wants to. And we're going to let it do that to replenish all of its energy. What I think I would like to see from this tree is some new branch choices coming out along the trunk. And uh, I will replace the old two thick branches um, that were okay when it was a part of a cathedral. But in the end, I just saw those getting bigger and thicker as they tried to support the different treetops that were going to be cathedral around. And I just wasn't quite sure. I kind of got, I don't know, I just kind of burned out on, on the look before I even got it there, I think. So that was just me. It's not you, tree, it's me. So um, what I would like to see with this guy is some more choices coming out along the trunk. And uh, right now, we're going to encourage that by letting it do just whatever it wants to do and as much of it. And, and we're just kind of holding back and letting it and letting it go. Uh, I'm thinking that in a minute that will also start to produce more. You know, we'll get more branches going that way. And as we do, we will probably start replacing some of those thicker, heavier things that you can see um, that have gone on for the last couple of years. So yeah, we've got a little catching up to do on uh, the Dawn Redwood, but I think it certainly 
has rebounded and is showing us that it's going to give us it's going to give us uh, what we put into it back and yeah that's a nice go um, and to that end we have probably saved off that same type of problem happening here because I did in the beginning have a, a similar attitude about how much energy these guys had and what was possible what I need to be thinking about on this tree is these corners here still look kind of hard square I don't want this to grow out and have a, a funny little shoulder sticking out whereas this has a nice rotation this kind of still looks a little square to me probably need to bite that off just to do a little shaping and I've got time on that but that's that's a little of the work that I'll be thinking about on here as you can see we've got all of those branches coming out from spring it is like April 4th or 5th so we have the stuff that we have cut back this is going to be our foundation and we're already starting to see some secondary branching from these guys you also see a lot of stuff that's coming out in places uh, that probably won't make the cut but we're going to allow all of that stuff or most of that stuff to run all year long to replenish the energy in our tree and then at the end of the growing season we'll make decisions if we want to uh, keep one uh, or two or a couple but then we'll go back and start cutting uh, trimming back our secondary branches making room for the tertiary to come uh, other than that we're not going to I'm not going to cut anything off this tree that isn't going to cause me a short-term problem if I have uh, too many branches coming out of one spot then I don't want to make a huge ball on the end of a limb so I will reduce that back to two or one if I have anything going straight up or straight down then I'll cut those I'll cut those uh, barring that uh, on the cypress trees I'm going to let them do all the little sucker branches that they want to for now I kind of watch that more on my um, on my oaks because they'll leave pepper, uh, little pepper marks all over the tree that take a minute to get over and it's just like once it starts you're just like constantly kind of fighting back and forth on that but um so that's kind of that's kind of the rule of thumb there i think you guys can see these guys these trees are starting to uh really leaf out nicely and our little tops are all are all just growing you notice they're all just going straight up for those lights i got a spider uh, i like the spiders they can hang out here Spider mites are not spiders, they're mites. Spider spiders are okay. They're spiders. Good English, Pat. Okay, well, uh, enough of the English lessons. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. It's just a little bit of a, of a look and a show and a tell. Uh, oh, uh, a couple of quick things. The cypress trees can be grown in standing water. You could have a, a drip tray like I have down there to catch their water and they get watered every single day. But you could also have a vat where these guys would be, you know, could stand in deep water. And that would be the ultimate tree to have if you're going to blow town for a few days or if you're really busy. Because that's the tree that won't die on you for lack of water while you're gone as long as you know to keep the vat full. So, you know, that's kind of hard if you just know to do that one thing, that would be rather hard to screw up. The Dawn Redwood doesn't like that much water. If you were to let a drip tray fill up and stay full, you would put the tree on on um, a one-way track to, to not making it. But they do like to have their feet wet, as they say, which means it takes, it will take uh, usually a daily watering. They'll usually, they'll usually soak up all, everything in the pot in a day and I'll be ready for more the next day. So they like a lot of water. They like all the water. 
um, you can overwater a um, a Dawn Redwood. I don't think I don't think it would be as easy <laughs> to overwater a bald cypress, seeing how they can literally live in standing water. So that's something about them. They like they do take well to being fed. Uh, they are fast growers. Um, when you look at other bonsai trees that are as big as that center one, you might be looking at years and years and years and years of growth. I believe the center tree still be uh, a teenager. And uh, the ones on either side of those are probably less than, uh, less than, you know, six years old each. Probably, probably less than, probably right around five years each, if I had to guess. So these guys grow fast. Uh, you're not necessarily looking at an ancient tree if you're looking at something that's a foot across at the base. They can they can really do impressive things really quickly. Uh, I have been told that they will not buttress in containers. I have seen a grower who's had a uh, who had a, uh, a cultivated uh, cypress tree that had buttresses on it. So I haven't really had a chance to talk to them about how that came about yet. It might have been that they did that in the field, or it might have been that uh, that the uh, no buttresses in containers is not always accurate. Uh, they would take well to uh, being field grown if you had a cypress tree that you ordered, you know, maybe order a couple from a mail order company and then try to grow one in a bonsai pot as a daily. But then if you uh, have a place on the back of, if you have some property that uh, tends to get low part of the uh, part of the year and stays wet, that would be an ideal place. You would see an enormous, an enormous trunk in base. In about seven or eight years, you would have easily, easily something much, much larger than that. So that's one quick technique to grow in the bald cypress. And that's about all the little off, all, about all the little off skirt avenues I'm going to take before I wind this up. Like and subscribe if you have not already. I appreciate you. Frida appreciates you. And we're going to continue to knock out our uh, four videos a week from uh, from now on. And uh, I recently stopped doing something that I had been doing to promote my own videos. And we've noticed a little a little slow in our in our uh, growth over that. It's nothing to be concerned with. I used to. Uh, finish every video and then uh, drop them on Facebook pages. We have our own Facebook page, The Bonsai Balcony. Uh, if you do Facebook, uh, you might want to look at that. If you don't do Facebook, God, I certainly understand that. Um, but to that end, I used to uh, drop a video and then sometimes miss my own premieres because I would then pass around that video to uh, everybody else's Facebook bonsai sites and uh, I was told early on that that confuses the algorithm but I noticed every time I stopped I stopped growing but in the back of my mind I thought there has to be a time when I um when I stopped posting my videos on everybody else's Facebook pages so about a month ago I did quit doing that and I have noticed <laughs> that I have I've kind of stopped growing but that's okay um it is what it is and we'll settle back into some sort of in some sort of rhythm that will well and truly that will well and truly be ours or not in either way um you are who i make these videos for and um and this is so worthwhile to me because of you thank you so much for watching